Good morning, Christy King. And good morning, Christy. This is uh, Chell Lindgren on the International Space Station. Fabulous. Nice to nice to talk to you. So um, you're a local kid, right? I mean, you graduated from Robinson Secondary School. Can can you give me a shout out and say hello from class of whatever Robinson Secondary School? Absolutely. Uh, hello, uh, class of '91 at uh, Robinson uh, Secondary School. Great. Uh, Great to have this opportunity to say, to say good morning. Well, good morning to you. Um, what made you want to become an astronaut? When did you know this is what you wanted to do? You know, that's a, it's an interesting question because I don't really remember when I first had that idea. Um, I wanted to do this for as long as I can remember. Um, and I think as I grew older, the... Uh, the reality of it, uh, you know, became evident that this was something that was probably wouldn't happen. And so I, I found things that uh, I was very interested in doing um, uh, that I had a passion for, like uh, like medicine, for instance. And uh, but always kind of kept in the back of my mind this idea of working in in the realm of human spaceflight. And uh, you know, I had uh, great teachers, great mentors, and instructors. Um, and, uh, and a little bit of luck. And I feel very fortunate to be working and living here on the International Space Station. How long have you been up? Well, I've been up here for a little over two months. Uh, my uh, crewmates, that, uh, my Soyuz crewmates, Kimia Yui, Oleg Kananyeko, and myself, uh, we've been up here um, for about half, a little over half of our, our mission. And so we'll be up here for just a little over five months. And so we're about halfway done. And I hate to backtrack on you, but um, advice to, to kids who dare to dream. I mean, not everybody can be an astronaut. Every, you know, the kids, when you're little, you say you want to do this and that. What would your advice be? You know, um, I think it's great to dream to become an astronaut. It's great to dream to become a doctor, engineer, um, physician, a uh, scientist, teacher. Uh, I think the the thing that you have to do, my advice would be to really try to seek that out, figure it out what it is that you want to do, um, and then start working towards that goal, even just a little bit every day. Um, and the other thing that I would say that if you do want to become an astronaut, that uh, kids really need to to um, seek out courses and studies in math and science, technology and engineering, because that's the language of space flight and uh, you need to be fluent. Well, the the language of space flight. So you're up in the International Space Station. Um, you're doing your experiments. I want to talk about the experiments, but what does an astronaut do for a 40-day week when he's not in space? Well, we have, uh, of course, um, a large office of astronauts that are on the ground right now that uh, support those of us who are flying. Um, we have uh, several folks that are in training um, to fly. The training flow is about two years long, and so we have several crews that are preparing for flight at this time. Um, and then, uh, so there are various jobs, though, within the office that support the activities up here, engineering, um, spacewalks, robotics, and those sorts of things. How many degrees do you have? I mean, you've, you, it, this is rocket science, so you do have to be smart and accomplished. I mean, do your degrees paint the wall? I've, uh, I've spent a lot of time in school, um, and it's not just, you know, it wasn't to achieve this goal, to become an astronaut, but really because I had a, a love for learning. Um, and uh, at the end of all of my schooling, uh, I was talking with my wife, wife one night, and uh, we figured out that uh, by the time I, I had finished with school, uh, I was in uh, 24 and a half grade. Talking about your wife, I mean, you got a wife and kids. Where do you live? Um, how does an astronaut uh, balance uh, space with home life? What do you miss about home? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I have a wife and and three uh, wonderful children, and uh, you know it, th that is an intricate balance. Um, my family is very important to me, and so being up here for for five months is certainly is probably the the hardest part of this mission. But you know this particular sacrifice uh, I think pales in comparison to the uh, the. Um, 
sacrifices that are made by you know the folks in the armed forces that have been uh, deployed for you know 12 months 18 months at a time but uh, spending that time away from family is difficult but technology certainly helps us to bridge that gap we have a internet phone we're able to do teleconferences once a week and uh, um, and we even get extra conferences when it's uh, one of your family member's birthday. And it's my youngest uh, son's birthday today, so I'm going to get a teleconference uh, for them. And I'll wish my son, uh, Tor, a happy birthday. Are you still local? Well, we live in uh, we live in Houston. Actually, my family and I live in Houston. That's where all of the uh, active astronauts live because that's really where we spend most of our time training, pri primarily. Um, but my my we're, folks, we're my parents, on... uh, still live in Burke. Oh, sweet. Um, we're short on time. Can you um, give me some bullet points on some of the experiments you've got going on and what you hope to learn from them? Absolutely. You know, the, the International Space Station is an amaz amazing laboratory. And just during the time that we're up here, um, I will see about 240 different experiments that range from material sciences, combustion, uh, fundamental physics, all the way to life sciences and biomedical sciences, which is really my area of interest and expertise. Um, and so we're seeing some of the changes that happen on in the human body in microgravity that mimic some of the changes that we see in diseases on the ground. Bone loss, cardiovascular deconditioning, uh, muscle atrophy. And by studying those things up here, we, we hope to um, help uh, humanity on the ground. And um, these um, things you're studying bio, is, is that to perhaps help future space flights that uh, take us longer to get places and, and to other locations? Well, that's absolutely true. You know, um, our, our research up here is really uh, two-pronged. It's the things that we are studying are, are really to help us also extend our presence deeper into the, the solar system for future flights, long-duration flights to our ultimate goal of Mars. Um, but in the meantime, a lot of the things that we learn can, uh, can be applied to, uh, to, for example, diseases on the ground and, and finding cures or, or uh, new medications for diseases on the ground. You know, it's super talking to you. Thank you so much. And can you overpronounce your name so I say it correctly? And maybe you give a shout out to mom and dad and Burke. Absolutely. My my first name is Chell. It's Swedish, so it's spelled a little differently, but Chell, like C-H-E-L, and then last name Lindgren. Um, and I'd love to say hi to my, my parents, my mom and dad in uh, in Burke, Virginia. Groovy, man. Have a good time up there, Rocket Man. Thank you so much for your time. It was, it was great talking with you this morning. Have fun. Bye-bye. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WTOP radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KUSA-TV. Welcome back. Getting to outer space, no easy task. It requires years and years of training and study. Years and years, yes. One of the astronauts currently on the International Space Station spent some of those years here in Colorado. Astronaut Dr. Shell Lindgren went to three schools in Colorado. He did, and he's on his first mission to space, which started back in July, expected to stay there for about six months. We're going to talk to him. We do want to tell you that there's going to be a pretty good delay since they are in space. And we have to start with this. Station, this is KUSA. How do you hear me? And I hear you loud and clear. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Corey. And uh, good morning, Colorado. It's great to be uh, with you this morning. Great. Yeah. Oh, and you sound wonderful, by the way. So thanks for joining us. You are involved in the Year of Space mission, uh, and you're doing a lot of experiments up there. Talk a little bit about what that involves. Well, it's the, it's the reason we have the space station. It's an amazing laboratory. Um, and over the time, just the time that I'm up here, we're going to be working on over 240 different experiments that range from the material sciences like combustion and fluid dynamics all the way to uh, biomedical sciences and life sciences. Um, and so I feel very fortunate uh, with my background of, as a physician to be up here to see some of the life science research that's going on. Dr. Lindgren, I think a lot of people want to know, what does your every day look like there on the International Space Station? 
Well, we have a fairly typical work week in that we work on Monday, kind of Monday through Friday, and we get the, the weekends uh, to ourselves. Um, but our days are very busy during the work week. We start to, with a morning conference at about 7.30, and we finish in the evening um, around 7 and 7.30 with an evening conference. And so between, uh, between those two conferences, uh, we're working. Uh, we have a, a little time off for lunch, and then we have to spend a little bit of time exercising as well. Yeah, just a day at the office, I guess, which is uh, really kind of strange when looking at it that way. So uh, being up there has got to be a bit of a challenge personally. What are some of the hardest things about living in space? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, it's an amazing place to live and work. You know, we have an incredible view. I'm standing uh, right next to one of our large windows that's looking down at the Earth, which provides kind of what we would call astronaut television, the opportunity to look down at the Earth um, with its beautiful colors and, and constantly changing lighting. Um, but but uh, and, and so those that that opportunity and the opportunity to be up here to work and, and live, um, you know, definitely uh, balances out some of the challenges. And one of the greatest challenges for, I think, all of us is just being away from our friends and family for, for such a long duration of time. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe aside from missing friends and family here, what other things do you miss here on Earth? Well, um, you know, there are a couple of things. One, I think, is uh, is the food. You know, we have a the the food laboratory at uh, at Johnson Space Center has done a great job to to provide us uh, nutritious and and uh, flavorful foods. But uh, the lim the menu is a little bit limited, so things get old after a little while. Um, and then the opportunity, you know, to just go outside to 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 go for a walk with the family, to go out to eat. Um, but again, these are very small things when you compare it to the opportunity to, to be able to live and work up here. Yeah, I know going for a walk up there is a little bit of an effort. We, we've watched that on occasion. Hey, Dr. Lindgren, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. We hope you come visit us in Colorado when you get finished with your mission. Uh, we understand uh, one of the uh, opportunities you have in zero gravity is you can just kind of do a flip. So we're going to ask you to do that as we leave you today. Terrific. It was great talking with you. Thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, have a great day. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so neat. <laughs> so cool. We just keep going.